episode 13. Let's see what we can do here. And we are check calling here. If he bets super large, now I just fold the flop already. But against its sizing, we can call. That's a bad turn. In a bad river. It's very likely that he has a king high here and now we are beat. It's also one of the few rivers where I think if they play bad check bad that they can have bluffs. And he uses the perfect sizing too, it's just but against that sizing specifically I think it's just going to be an ace most of the time anyway. And yeah the turn will be a scare, scare card from his perspective and that makes it very likely to be nice as well. Consider check raising there expectatively, but I thought, okay, I probably want to have a better hand, like something that has some backdoor draw to go with it. Gonna be delayed to betting at 9 here. Well, that's actually a terrible turn. But we still wanna bet. If he has jack 10 or something like that still in his range, we want to get rid of that. But he doesn't, so... <laughs> now he's on either pairs or ace highs. Uh, I think we can get rid of the ace highs on this river, so that's bad. And there's even a chance, I think, that he will fold something like threes. You know, yeah, it's, it's always... Risky to assume that they are willing to fold bluff catchers and So you don't want to count on that you always want to give it a very low probability But I think a size should he should be folding that the majority of the time I don't think he will call off ace five uh, ace a six suited here I mean if it's a six of spades then obviously but that probably already bets the flop And I was hoping, yeah, I mean, now we have to call again, we just get the odds to draw. And we do hit. The problem now though is that our strength, yeah, we're just <laughs> not strong enough to call this band here on the river. So we do hit one of our routes, but it's only really out if, if he bets small on the river or checks. If he decides to bet this large, it's obviously never ever a bluff, and we just have to fold. To exploit his strategy, which is bet large for value and bet small as a bluff. And that's an assumption, it's, I don't know that to be the case. But my experience tells me that. Especially if they bet one big blind under pot, <laughs> that is probably one of the more obvious value bets. Um, definitely calling to set mine. This is basically, I mean, it's just a break even call, kind of. I don't think I'm making money here by calling, because the rake is super high, 
We have to call 7 to hit a set basically because I don't think otherwise we ever win the hand. I mean the amount of times that I call here and it goes check, 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 check and I actually win a Jonah, I mean that's going to be... What's the percentage chance of that? It's probably 5%, probably not even. So I'm calling those 5% chance plus my 12% of hitting set. That's, yeah. And the times I hit a set I expect to get enough implied to break even on the call. Kind of. It could be though that because of, for example, how ranges in the spot interact, that it's minus EV. I mean, it sounds so ridiculous, but it could totally be the case. Because if this guy 3 bets very loose, then I don't have implants against him. And if this guy overcalls very loose, then yeah, I just don't have implants. I mean, now let's watch the hand and see what kind of hands they have here. Maybe it can get us get us some ideas. Yeah, he's probably check folding here. Yes. Not betting, I want to delay to see bet this hand. And he pots it. <laughs> well played. And rook three bet here. It's actually it's probably one of the few spots where calling might be better than three betting, simply because this guy's short stack and he might be jamming a lot of fans that we want to see a flop against. Um, yeah, and also that if I three bet, obviously now the SPR is super awkward. And on this turn, I just give up. It's probably one of the one of the worst turns we could see here. And now 3 bet the sand. It's pretty much random. Most of the time I would just call. And on slop we check. Because we have no, absolutely no backdoor draws going on at all. And I want to be betting a lot here, it's just that yeah, if I bet everything I think he doesn't fold enough. Got a call on the brick rubber here. And he makes a thin value bet, which is exploiting me there for sure. But because I think the average population is do doesn't make those thin value bets, they will check nines but bet queen jack again. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm calling. So here. I think he's not laughing on our outs, so we want to be raising, calling off a jam. Mm. 
bad ward. He's probably all over this, even though he shouldn't be. But doesn't matter what theoretical ranges look like here, it's more important what actual ranges look like, and actual ranges will have a lot of pseudo connectors and low pairs, and that means he will be all over this board. And we have to fold the river. We could also decide to bluff catch, but it's yeah. The simple fact that he's going to be all over this board, he's gonna be betting sevens now, and like. His range is way stronger than what it should be. Not the best river because now his flush was get there, which is going to be the main portion of his bluffs. Uh, and it's interesting to see that we win anyway, but there you see. <coughs> He did have a flush draw, he just didn't have the hard flush draw this time. And in his shoes, I would bet the river. I mean, it's so unlikely that I have a flush there. I mean, anything that can continue to a river bed really is. I would have to be a fish. So yeah, you see it, right? They they love double barreling, they just hate bluffing the river. They get the best possible river to bluff and still don't do it, so... I mean, it's not the best possible river, but it's, it's a pretty good river to bluff, so... Yeah. They double barrel too much and don't triple enough. Which doesn't imply that you should now be always calling two times and then always folding the river or something like that. I'm not trying to say that, I'm just saying that you should lean towards the tendency, which means if you have a spot where, uh, okay, you're like... You're not sure between two decisions, that's when those kind of tendencies come into play. You should not now suddenly start calling turns in spots where it's a slam dunk fold. It's still a slam dunk fold then, even if they have that tendency of always double barrel bluffing and never triple barrel bluffing. But in those spots here, for example, this spot is like, okay, we have a pair plus gut shot. We don't block any of the flush draws. And yeah, this is one of those spots where, where you're in between folding or calling, or maybe even raising. And yeah, if you know this tendency of the players to not bluff the river if they have a seven of diamonds here, then just call instead of fold. And if the if the tendency was to the opposite. And I mean the only real way of finding out the tendency is to just play a million hands, right? But at some point you got it down. Then you check you, you can just go with it. And it's not all it's also not like I'm making a huge adjustment here of like in some three bed pot or four bed pot for two hundred big blinds, it's a pretty small pot, so even if my assumption was wrong, it wouldn't hurt that much. Yeah, we'll just call here. Now we have a pretty interesting situation. I do not know how we play this spot. I mean, now it's simple because he bets. I'm not raising here. It doesn't really make sense. Because if he has a king, I think we stack him anyway, and I'm like, yeah. We can just race the river all in. 
Okay, east is really bad. We could also check here actually. But hitting the three is not that important. So I'm, yeah, I'm leaning towards betting. And we win against trips. So my assumption here that we stack kings and trips anyway was correct, which is good. Uh, here we bet the river. I'm not sure if it's actually a spot where they do bluff catch, but he should have bluff catchers there. If he doesn't, then I exploit him with my bluffs too much. My bluffs here would be king. Oh, actually, wait. I thought the turn was a jack, never mind. Yeah, actually. If he never bluff catches here, he's actually fine. He's, I'm, I'm not exploiting him in any way. It's a pretty unique spot where I'm pretty value heavy in my barrels. Anyway. Not check raising here. If I have the King of Hearts, I'm considering it to continue. And I, I should actually continue there at that point. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Leave a like or dislike and a comment. See you in the next one. Bye bye.